This week, oh boy, God's starting out strong. This week, this week. This week. What are we doing this week? We're making custom masks for school and for Other anything, stuff. really. So. We're doing this episode because Tyler wanted to make a very specific mask. She had a very specific idea for a mask that she wanted to make, and hers is last, so we'll get there. This is the basic version that I used. I like making them for us because then I can use three layers of fabric for one thing. So the pattern that I'm using has the inner layer and then there's an outer layer. And so I just did double the inner layer. So there's three layers of fabric. I'm pretty picky about our masks. I want them to fit really well and be comfortable and not be messed with. So when I make masks for you guys, I make you try them on and we wear them for, you know, hours and we make sure that you're not having to like touch them and adjust them constantly. Because if you don't have to adjust them constantly, that means they're doing their job and you're not going to be getting germs on them while you constantly touch them. And also Sam wears glasses all day, every day. So we need something that seals really nice against your nose so you don't fog up your glasses. So we got to make sure that these masks fit super well. Super duper, absolutely doopy doopy duper well. Yep, exactly the right size for your various sized faces. <laughs> it's such a shame because the masks <laughs> cover up Tyler's adorable freckles. <laughs> Not all of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. It's like... Brrr. I feel like my favorite freckle zone is your nose slash cheeks. Yeah, I'm 100% heartbroken that you guys have to wear masks this year and deal with COVID again, but I am 100% glad that it's a mask requirement at your school. I think everyone is safer that way. You guys kind of got used to the masks, yeah. you know? Like you don't, you two don't complain ever with, about the masks. You've gotten used to I mean, to I them. don't complain. <laughs> that, is, that is true. You are not a complainer. But both of you guys just wear them. When we say wear them all day, you're like, okay. I'm like, okay, mouth cushion. Mouth cushion? <laughs> yeah. It's a little unpleasant when it's hot, but not too bad. And you guys are used to seeing me and respirators and masks all the time for work, for painting and for sawdust and stuff. So it's, it's not a foreign concept. It was just like, okay, this is what we're doing. <laughs> So Sam, this is your first one. Yep. So what are you doing? I'm doing an ocean thing. Of course, I'll do an ocean mask. Yeah, Sam's are obsessed with the oceans, girl. So we got out our fabric paint that we have for squishies. <laughs> That's handy. We had actual fabric paint so that we can actually make them. The goal also was to make sure that all of these masks were machine washable. So everything we used had to be something that's intended for fabric and will survive. So you used puffy paint for your little fishies and matte fabric paint for the waves and for the bubbles. And then you used more matte paint for the little eyeballs. I think it's cute. And it's Sharpie for cute. the blush. What are we missing when we have the bottom of your face covered? You have the best smile. When her adult teeth came in last year, her smile got so big. She had teeny tiny baby teeth and then her adult teeth came in and I'm just obsessed. This one's another one for Samantha. So I did bleach to make some cloudiness on that mask. I painted on some bleach. I let it sit for 10 minutes and then washed it out really good so that the bleach wouldn't destroy the fabric. And then this is a iron-on transfer. And we have several packages of iron-on transfers. This was the last sheet of iron-on transfer paper that was in our dark shirt transfer packaging. And so the dark shirt transfers are white backing usually so that they show up against a dark color. They don't turn clear and you peel them before before you iron them on. Turns out that this one was actually in the wrong package. It's one of the regular clear t-shirt transfers. And so we did that completely wrong. I shouldn't have peeled the backing off first. You're supposed to print it backwards, lay it down on the fabric and iron on top of the backing. And I peeled it off and it still worked. So I guess it just goes to show that even if you do it totally wrong, you could still get a good result. This is me drawing an idea for a stencil. So we got 
screen printing stuff the other day. I'm super excited. So we got some screens and squeegees and some screen printing ink and some emulsion. For this project, I didn't want to do a full emulsion screen print. I wanted to kind of dip my toes in because I used to do screen printing in high school. I did a lot of screen printing, but it's been an embarrassingly long amount of time since then. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out a stencil by hand and then you just you tape that to the back of the screen and it'll work just like screen printing. This is a screen and it is basically just fabric stretched across a wooden frame and stapled in place. We're going to do a video on screen printing next month where we'll actually explain how to screen print and that you can DIY the screen and everything else. It's actually very easy and fun. So we'll, we'll do a whole other version, but this is sort of the quick and messy take on it. So cutting out the stencil, not my favorite thing to do ever. It's kind of awful. You did kind of do a complicated, complicated shape. <laughs> complicated design. I did, but I wanted to do something fun. So I've got the Kraken attacking a big sailing ship. So you get the ink onto the squeegee and then you get the color onto the stencil part. Make sure that you've got nice even coverage and then you kind of squeegee it out. And then it goes through the screen and onto the fabric. If you actually use the emulsion and you burn it with any image or even a photograph, then you can get really clean images. Cutting it out like this, they're not gonna get the best result. I thought it was Ukatoa. Ukatoa, yeah, <laughs> it could be. Not the Kraken, it's Ukatoa attacking the ship. Sure, Ukatoa from Critical Role Campaign 2. The blue is an old paint shirt, and I tested it on that because it doesn't matter. And then we went to the mask, and then the mask was tricky. I put some cardboard inside of it to try to hold it straight, and then I stuck it up on this box because of the shape of it, and I thought that might help. But it turns out that I needed it to be flat, flat, so that the screen wasn't like rocking all over the place, because between the wrinkles in the mask and all the movement in the screen, I got a very sad and lumpy screen print on this one. So I dabbed at it with cardboard and then once it was dry I layered it up and I did the second layer with the actual ship. So the second layer I taped it down and tried to straighten out the wrinkles before I taped it down and I made sure it was on a flat surface and then I lined it up and did the gray print and the gray print went a lot better than the black print did. And then once the ink dries to the touch you heat set it with an iron so that's what's happening here. Once it's heat set, you can wash it and it should be good. So the black doesn't show very much, but that's good because those were not good prints. There's a black one on either side. It's kind of just like a nice shadowy faint thing. I don't mind it. Here we're making mine. I wanted to make a gas mask. Um, I thought that that would look cool, especially does. with black and then some neon color. We use some packing foam, again, the squishy packing foam that we have to cut two circles for the cartridges. And then you cut out some slightly larger circles of the black fabric and some strips of this purple here. There's your Oreos. <laughs> and then I sewed around one side to get a nice clean, <laughs> well, with my sewing skills, <laughs> a clean-ish <laughs> sewn edge for that front face of the cartridge. And then the back face was hand sewn. So this was just sewing the, the front face together. This is hand sewing the back face and I basically just chased it around on the table. It kept scooching. They were so lightweight, which is good. We wanted them to be lightweight because we didn't want it to be uncomfortable to wear. So we made sure that, I mean, that foam is super lightweight, but man, that thing just kept scooching away from me when I was sewing up the back. And then you stitched on these white stitches on these purple felt details. This is sort of an homage to Virgil from Sanders Sides, the white <laughs> stitching and the purple and black. Just like a phone case. And it kind of looks like, what is it? I think the toxic one is like a skull, but it's the radioactive one that's this. Here I am sewing on the hooks. So we wanted to make sure that these were machine washable. So the cartridges hook on. I did the loops on the mask and then sewed the hooks onto the cartridges. There's three on each cartridge and they hook in place and then they stay put very nicely. I love your mask, Ty. 
Mine was the most complicated, but it's the only one that went pretty much exactly to plan. Yeah, we struggled with the other ones, didn't we? But yeah, yours, yours went very well. And the reason why I added the little stitches, which were not in my original plans, was because I got a phone and a phone case. Mm -hmm. And the phone case is Virgil, so I, so I was like, I'm yeah. making a mask that's purple and black. Yeah, Tyler got her first cell phone, because at the end of the week, she'll be 13! You're so old, oh my gosh! Yep, she is so old. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. Now we have to live with a teenager. That's okay, Oof. it's only Ty.